Welcome everyone to the Voice of Terminus show. Um, a bit late. Uh, normally went to do this on the Thursday, but we had to move this to today because of uh, unforeseen uh, circumstances, and we apologise. But we're here. Um, say hello, Josh. Hey guys. Uh, say hello, Lex. Who's? I'm uh, cold. <laughs> he's actually playing a halfling. Oh, um, no. <laughs> so we're going to talk about. Um, a system that Josh came up with, a reputation system that is tied to you as a player personally. Now, you know, what is the difference between what we know that's already existing in MMOs and with what we're trying to do? So we're going to quickly explain to you guys what we mean by this because reputation is a, a terminology that you already all know you might relate this to faction um and so forth for you know in some games it's known as reputation for some it's known as faction we're trying to basically bring this into a third dimension um and add a twist to the normal way you earn faction and your or or slash reputation so bear with us while we go through all of this um Lex, do you want to go and start it off with the difference between the existing systems? Yeah. So everyone's pretty familiar with how faction works in uh, in most MMOs. Uh, first of all, I will say that I will use faction and reputation interchangeably because of all the games I played, and I'm a I, I'm sorry. What I'm actually meaning is NPC factions, but what we have right now in a lot of games is pretty one dimensional. You know. You do something, you either gain or lose, or both, or perhaps nothing, and that's the end of it. What we're kind of proposing is almost a multi-tiered faction system with a much broader view of how it interacts with your with your play session, basically. Mm -hmm. But I'll leave the I'll leave the details out for now. For now. <laughs> so Josh, tell us a bit about the general idea behind your idea on this reputation system. Okay. Um, well, every, every MMO out there, some sort of a faction system, um, which you can just earn as you go along. Um, it gets kind of stale, boring type of thing um, as, as it happens. Um, but... I thought, well, you know, how do we actually interact with the NPCs? How do how do they view us in the world? How do we make the world feel more alive? And this is where the reputation system um, can actually help in that regard. Mm -hmm. um, you as the player character, um, if you are going to destroy the landscape around a specific area or city, um, your reputation with those people are going to be pretty poor. So you stepping into those cities around there is going to really mess you up. Um, this is just an example of the reputation. Um, so, yeah, I think that, well, I, I don't know what the Project Gorgon favor system is, but, yeah, this is just something that... Yeah, base, basically, basically what it is, is I might be... A dark mirror, um, my, my character might be a dark mirror, they're naturally evil or aligned towards the, the naughty side of things. That does not mean that I, as a personal character, as a personal dark mirror, can't influence how I'm seen from out, you know, from within Terminus. So I could still um, gain a re personal reputation with the human race, with the halflings that allow me to interact with them on a level that normally would not be given to the race in general because they are um at war with each other or they just have a hatred towards each other so that's how kind of how we're looking at this reputation system so um those you know those are the things that we're going to be looking at um let's go and talk quickly before we go into all the discussion points and and all the theory craft and stuff let's go and talk about what um josh put up so you get a few ideas on 
what we're going to be talking about and how this can kind of work and come together as we go throughout the show. So reputation, how it is earned. And we'll, we'll call this personal reputation so that you guys can um, help get a little distinction here. Exactly. Yeah. We're, we're going to, like I said, uh, you know, we're going to probably mess up the terminology a little bit, but please mm -hmm. bear with us. Yep. So when we talk about faction reputation, we're talking about from the normal general scale, how it's normally earned. And when we talk about personal reputation, this is relating to the system that we would like to try and see if this is something that would maybe be a good thing or something that could be done and or is of, of interest. So our personal reputation is earned. Obviously, you know, your typical things, questing, killing enemies of the people within the area, defending outlaying camps and cities from attacking forces, finding rare items, e.g. relics of religious significance to the people and wearing them within the community. Clearing out dungeons for the townsfolk and returning items found within the dungeons. Donating goods at the market, temple, items of significant value to the player or the player slash gold, whatever Josh put there. Um, also, how could this work with PvP? Forming friendships and building reputation with, an, with alliance cities or aligned cities, basically. So mm. those are ways, some of the ways you could earn this personal reputation. Um, yep. we'll basically get into all of this in a bit, but I'll quickly run down, run you guys through it. So rep personal reputation, how it could be possibly lost, um, a natural decay over time. If you don't inter interact with, with the city where you are from, but only when you're online, you know, this is something that we discussed yesterday, um, so that everybody's on the same page, it would naturally decay over time when you're playing the game when you log out basically the decaying would stop and when you log back in that's when it would carry on so um that's how we look at this then killing friends of the people within the area attacking outlaying camps and cities therein lies the moral choice keeping or selling those items found within dungeons that are dear to the townsfolk killing natural resources found within the area minimal reputation loss yeah and then josh brought up some ideas on you know the benefits of earning this personal reputation and this is where it gets um very interesting and goes in depth and we'll get we'll, we'll all get there and hopefully um you guys will have a clearer idea on what we um mean by this different reputation choices result in different leveling experience i.e different quest lines access to different dungeons etc Increasing rewards from the cities, i.e. weapons, patterns, training, access to rare dungeons. Town folk are more helpful and willing to give more information to quest lines. Perception could be lower. Ability to pass through an area and not be attacked. Transport provided by city to give swifter travel choices in the area. 10% increase as an example. Access to areas and cities that are usually off limits to normal adventurers. Reduction in guild fees, cost of items, higher faction levels, i.e. revered, can be earned should your reputation be spotless with the people. This in turn enhances the benefits you can receive and access to secret locations not previously opened. Access to special mounts and NPCs to help with camps, dungeons, etc. So that's the some of the positive things that um, Josh brought up. Then let's have a look at the negative. What are the negatives? To a ruined personal reputation. Eliminate different quest lines. No access to certain NPCs. Kill on site in certain cities. No access to goods and resources. No access to certain parts of the cities. No access to trainers. Your behavior should have consequences in the game. Your reputation should stay with you as you adventure and either hinder or help you depending on whether you have been good or bad. If you choose to retire your character and use the progeny system, your surname should start you off on a negative or good path with certain townsfolk. So, so that's basically the overview. And we're going to go and get into um, all of this. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. let's talk about, before we get into all our theory craft ideas that we talked about previously, Let's have a look at this from the perspective of the positive and the negative of such a system. What are the positive things and what are the negative things of a system like this? Um, Josh, 
Do you want to start it? Okay, well, the positive things about a system such as this is that it adds an extra layer of depth to the game. Um, I think that it's, instead of you just grinding and moving on, grinding and moving on, it allows you to make the cities, uh, the longevity of the cities ultimately um, last. So, as we saw them creating Throne Fast, the amount of hours that those developers and the graphic artists and everything put into that is is probably, I don't know, it's, it's incredible. Uh, and to have people just waltz in there at the beginning um, of the of the game and never go back to that type of area would be criminal. So in this way, it allows you to open up new areas ultimately um, over time, and and create some sort of a longevity to the to the cities over four to five years. Make them actual worth something in the end. Mm -hmm. So that's that's definitely certain uh, benefits to it. <clears throat> Uh, uh, negatives? Well, negatives is that uh, you definitely have to watch it over time. Uh, if you are going to be grouping with people, if you are going to be um, killing stuff randomly and just to get XP, you are going to um, you are going to lose your your standings with the community. And you are suddenly going to walk in there thinking you can go into maybe an area one day, and they're going to say, "Hang on a second, you've um, you've actually destroyed part of the um, the the wilderness out there." Um, and and our allies, why should we let you back in here? Type of yeah. Thing. So yeah. yeah. There's also a few. Um positive aspects of it not just from the system itself uh, what did you write up what was that vex i didn't see it i only just oh i i, I ordered something uh, okay so basically <laughs> there's also some positive things to look at from the community perspective and some negatives as well um the positive with a system like this it makes you have to socialize you know, we, we do know that Pantheon is about socializing, making yeah. friends, creating bonds, and so forth and so forth. So that's the positive thing about this. The negative is, though, that it could go into a wither of a spider web and create so much havoc. Because not everybody is going to want to... Um, Endeavor in such a system with all this depth and everything and have to worry about all the choices that they make and Something as an example is Normally you would go about group up with your friends. You'd go into Hownia's cave you're down the wraith. You wouldn't think twice about it With the system that we have though what we're trying to propose and, and theory craft about and speculate on is if this system was in play, you would have to think twice about doing that. So mm. that's that's kind of the negative towards it because not everybody is going to want to do this. Um, yeah. Lex, you got anything to add? I I, I like this system, um, and I will just before I even get into it, just say I don't like grinding. I, I hate faction grinding. Absolutely hate it. Yeah. So, mm. like with things like the decay. I know a lot of people at first can be like, no, no way, uh-uh. I have to redo my work again. But here's the thing, okay? It would obviously be very slow. You yeah. would obviously be able to keep an eye on it, you know? And this is something that adds immersion, or at least it could, simply because if you, say, volunteer your time to a soup kitchen, well, you don't, you stop going. Two years down the road, you come back, they've forgotten all about you. No one knows who you are. Your reputation is gone. Mm. Maybe someone remembers you, but who, who knows? Who knows? Yeah. But the fact of the matter is, it adds a slight tinge of realism to it. Too much, not enough, that's a personal preference. Mm. Um, I like the idea of the world. It, it almost makes you feel like the world reacts to your actions. 
mm. for good or bad or both, you know, meaning if I want to go and beat up on orcs, then the orcs probably aren't going to like me. That's common sense, mm -hmm. you know, but I have to think, is there a reason that I want these people to like me? Yeah. Nine times out of ten, if it's an NPC and you're out in the wilderness, you probably don't have to worry about it. Yeah. But if you decide to not ruin your faction or do something that actually improves your faction with them, it might have unexpected benefits. Like, now you can just run right through the camp. They won't attack you. No problem. Maybe they've got a vendor in there that will now talk to you. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Offer you different quests. Different, right. different quest lines. Uh, and then all of a yeah. sudden these mobs are actually serving a double purpose. They can be basically XP and loot pinatas, which is standard what happens anyway. Or they could potentially be another area for quests, for adventure, for story. Mm -hmm. You know? This 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 gives you options with your with your selected race. That you wouldn't have otherwise. If we look at how faction reputation normally works, if you start off as a um, Scar in Scargol, you'll be born with fifty thousand um, positive rep faction towards that city. Um, me as a dark darkmere, I would have fifty thousand plus towards my city. Um, and Josh with his Archai would have 50,000 towards his Archai city and so forth. So those are the standards. And faction is definitely important to have. But the way it's been done, like like Lex said, grinding faction, there, come, there comes a point in time where it just becomes boring. You, yeah. you, yes. you do... You do Which the, for me is like 10 minutes. You do, it is terrible. Yeah. You do four or five <laughs> um, different kill quests... And after that, it repeats itself. You get 500 faction points, 3,000 or whatever it is, and you and you work your way through that. Um, the way we look at this, faction is something that you can earn. You don't have to, and it's given to you from the get-go. What we're mm -hmm. suggesting is adding a personal reputation system to that additionally that opens up life choices, that expands on your experience going through the game. So... Right. You might be a naturally bad scar, and um, <laughs> <Look, sir. laughs> you work towards becoming friends with the halflings, which we know will never happen, like with uh, Lex. But um, he could possibly I'm more likely to fly. <laughs> he could possibly end up being a non-kill on sight scar when he comes right. towards the halfling city, and they let him waltz right in. Because he's worked towards that personal rep. Right. And this personal rep would have no influence on his per his his general standings as a scar mm -hmm. towards his city. They still hate the halflings. Um he can still go into Scargol and do his thing. It's a personal rep. It's, it's like your conscience. They don't know what you're doing hundred percent of the time. They're not gonna be keeping an eye on you for hundred percent of the time to see if you're a traitor or anything like that. So you can basically make a personal life choice with this system that we're trying to bring in that offers so much depth to the game. Um, and, you know, there's also how to expand on this for other play styles. Well, I, I, think, I think we should also clarify that we're not necessarily proposing this system to VR. We're not being like, hey, this is a great <laughs> idea. Yeah. No. Mm. All we're trying to do is give them food for thought. That's yeah. it. Exactly. If they, if they want... If they find something intriguing and they want to run with it, Go by all it. means, please do. But if they don't because they, they're comfortable in their own system, that's fine too. That's their choice. Yep. Yep. But I know in the past we've had issues with some people thinking that we are actually trying to pitch these ideas directly to them, and not really. No. You know? no. This is us just chewing the fat, basically. Yep. That's all we're doing. So... Um, so yeah, also other benefits for it could be um, you might actually earn monikers as well. So you could, after grinding reputation or getting reputation over a period of time, uh, become the lord of, of an area and earn land. Yeah. Um, something along those lines over time. Mm -hmm. You know. So reputation that way. to me coming from an old school point of view 
has always seemed something like, oh, God, I have to do this. To yeah. Me. You know, and it shouldn't always. I mean, granted, that's what it is in the end. Right. Yeah. You want them to like you so you can get something from it. Yeah. But does it always have to feel like a chore? No, it doesn't. Nope. No one has bothered to really put a lot of thought into a new system so that it's either so immersive that you don't realize you're doing it or that it's almost like a mini game. Mm -hmm. That's the problem with it as it stands right now. And this is also something that, you know, offers um, developer teams time as well. It's, it's a huge time sink. It kind yes. of it kind of drags you away from I have to get from one to one hundred in X amount of time. You're only focused on the end game because that's where you want to be. That kind of just you know brings it in a complete different direction. It sways you away from that because yeah. your choices matter. Yeah. And or, the, or at least they should. They should because yeah. another thing that always kind of wound me up in in MMOs is. Having that 50,000 faction for Kanos or Freeport from the get-go with my character because I created a character in that city and I picked a class in that city, I should have to still earn the right to do something, things, or gain certain something access that is, towards... That is a privilege. A privilege Correct. towards being a part of that race. The way I see faction, how it should normally be is... Okay, I've got a faction towards the Darkmere City. That means that when I come running back to those gates, and I've got a horde of evil behind me, trying to hunt me down and kill me, that means the city guards are going to protect me. But what goes on in the city, and how I go about and get along in the city, is something that I've got to earn. Because I've just right. logged it, I've just created this character, I'm new Correct. in this game, people yeah. don't know me. I'm one of their right. folk, but I, you know, who am I? You know, what gives me the right to have access to everything from the get-go? I should have to earn that some way. And right. um, this is a way to kind of bring that into this era with the All personal right. reputation. Because as you go through doing certain chores within the city and all this kind of stuff, you gain reputation with, with, mm -hmm. um, with merchants, with crafters with the city guard, with the normal folk, with the, with the folk that are in charge. And depending on how you go about your day, you might earn access to um, the crafting side of things quicker than you do on the trading side of things because you don't do a, do a lot with traders at first. You're concentrating on your crafting stuff, so that gives you ways to earn your personal or build up your reputation there a bit faster Correct. whereas it doesn't with the with the trading because you haven't spent so much time there but you you know you you kind of get to determine what you do when you do it and how you do it so it's going to be a different experience for everybody which Correct. makes this also this brings a socializing aspect into things because now let's say for instance lex me and josh were all our kind josh is concentrating on the crafting Lex has concentrated on the trading. I've concentrated on just getting to know the townsfolk. Now, I might gain access to a certain area within that zone where they can't normally get in. But now we group up together, we form a group, they can waltz in with me because I have that reputation. The same goes for Josh. He might have access to certain crafting um, NPCs, vendors that um, I and Lex don't have, mm -hmm. but we group up, we might be able to see, view, see what's going on. It could exactly. even be, look at this from a vendor's point of view, okay? I could offer someone, someone come to my door right now and be like, you know, I want to buy a PC because they know I sell PCs. Well, I'm not going to give them the greatest deals. I'm not even going to offer them the, to purchase some of the stuff that I've been holding on to because it's good stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, if my good friend for 10 years stops by and says, hey, I need a PC, I'm going to pull out all the stops. Yep. So maybe there's actual tiers to, their vendor, to the vendor lists yep. where exactly. you basically have for everybody 
and then for like privileged customers. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You could you could tier it out into different tiers, and that's how um, we see the rep, the personal reputation system working as well. You don't have um, zero to fifty thousand points. You have different tiers you go through. For instance, to make it simple, you have got five negative, five positive tiers you go through, and you got your neutral tier. Um, and you basically start off in general neutral. Because you haven't done anything yet. Right. So they look at you neutrally. Yeah. So you can sway in either direction. So you go out and do your thing with a group of friends. You start whacking a few rack in. And all of a sudden you get back to the city. And you might have access to something that you didn't have before. So uh-huh. those are kind of some of the things that we looked at. Is basically This would be tiered. And... We'll get into that in a, in a little bit, but let's go and extend on how, how this goes on to other play styles. So we would break this down, this reputation system, or this personal reputation system, into two different um, play styles. You'd have your adventuring personal rep and your crafting personal rep. Because there's going to yep. be, you know, to kind of um, expand on it and give people different choices. And Lex wants to say something real quick. I don't want to exclude a play style, so we're going to include PvP. Mm-hmm. into the adventuring side but yeah, basically yeah. instead of mob kills it'd be player kills okay yeah but that's not something that we're going to run into probably very heavily because we're majority not pvpers and pantheon isn't majority pvp mm. but we didn't forget about you pvpers that they yeah. were just saying it's not really the main focus right now so getting back to what i was saying and um, looking at this from a crafting perspective, what, what, you know, why would I want to go and earn personal reputation towards crafting? Well, this adds a little bit of depth towards the crafting system in general. Crafting in most games, let's all be honest, is boring. Mm-hmm. You, you know, you hit a bunch of buttons, you sit around for a few hours, you're leveling up, you're doing the same old, same old over and over again, and, and at some point you hit the main, you hit max level, and you're done. You're like this, few, and then. Six weeks later, the next expansion comes out. You've got to do it all again. That's boring. So this will kind of add um, a little more depth to it by... If you start, um, for instance, you're a carpenter. And you start crafting items for other players. Now, we're going to look at this from the perspective of how it was done in EverQuest 2. I'm sure it might have been done in other games as well, but you know this is the one we're most common with. In EverQuest 2, you could basically craft for other people. You would you would basically click on the crafting table, click on the player you want to craft the item for, go ahead and craft it. It would craft for that person the item. He would have to put in the resources and stuff like that. So look at it from that perspective, that you're crafting another item for somebody else. Now, you're gaining yeah. rep with that. You're gaining right. reputation with that because you're crafting for a different player. Now Lex comes into the mix and starts cra- asks me to craft him something and so forth and so forth. So I'm gaining rep. And at some point in time, I'm going to have so much rep that the city might come up to me and say, Hey, you've done so much for, you know, for, for people, the city, for the city in or, general, for, or for the people, the folk of this city. Yeah. We would like yeah. you to be an official city crafter. So which now, come with its own benefits. which comes with its own benefits. For instance, right. they might have a short list of <clears throat> suggested crafters. No, you're looking for a carpenter. Boom! There's a list of carpenters here that we suggest. The game suggests, you know. So they might go to, they might suggest Lex as a, as as a carpenter. They might suggest Joshua. I might be listed uh, up there. Crafter, whatever. And, and so yeah. forth and so forth. So you got a list <clears throat> of people up there. Um. In its own, that's also um, a little bit of player competition as well. So that adds to that from the positive side. People wanting to, you know, because people, we, we do compete. We're always looking at each other. We're always looking at each other's classes, you know, comparing each other. Um, people always want to be the first, ma- you know, max crafter, get the first crafting items, discover all of that. That adds to it as well. You mm. trying to maintain yourself as one of the suggested crafters. Um, and, and there's so much more that they could go and offer you um, going yeah. forward as well. So this is just, well, some, just some basic idea. That. Just to expand on that, I mean, um, if you build up your reputation with, for instance, the scar over time, 
you may be able to befriend the crafter in the city over there and you can find patterns which mm. are alien and unique to your own starting city. So your guild, that maybe you build the guild, uh, uh, might have unique aspects to it that you wouldn't find anywhere else. And all of those type of things help to create a uniqueness uh, amongst all the player characters, ultimately. Yeah. And this goes, you know, for for both sides of, of, of <coughs> or, 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 all all sides of it, for the adventurers, for the PvP, for the crafters as well. But um, let's just go and bring in some other things as well. You know, how do we approach the shortcomings? You know, we've also talked about this because with a system like this, there's going to be that doubt, that fear of, for instance, um, the example that we were we were discussing. Lexa might be working on his epic. And if he, if we do have a, a personal reputation system, and he he needs to get in with the archive, for instance, he might have to. You know, he's working on getting into the archive because that's one of the requirements or whatever for the epic quest. Um, and now he comes across a few people in the newbie zone. They ask him for help. Lex is a helpful guy. He would normally go out and help them. He'd go, no problem. Let's go. What's your problem? Let's go. I'll, I'll help you out. Now he might think about it twice, going, hey, hang on a minute. They're in this area killing these these NPCs. That's going to affect my personal rep towards the archive, for instance. Maybe, maybe as an example. So how can we combat some shortcomings like this? How can we combat when you're in a group together as well? Um, the shortcomings of... Um, Destroying your personal rep with you know, by by being in a group with individuals that might go into um, Black Dagger Keep and start killing the Wraith and the Ratkin and, and this that and the other and that's gonna you know Ultimately affect your personal rep in some form or fashion So how can we approach these shortcomings and combat them? And those are things that we talked about um, One of the things that we what up was having maybe buffs that you could um, cast upon the individual. Um, for instance, we have Joshua, Yanila, and Lex in the group. We've got a Scar, a Dark Mirror, and an Archai. Now, Josh could buff Friend of the Archai on Lexa. That would basically prevent him from having any personal um, rep effect go towards him when he's in that group in that dungeon killing the the wraiths or the ratkin for instance so those are some of the things that we looked at um another thing that we looked at looking at it from the perspective of um helping out new players um is to because this is definitely a complex system and we don't want to um scare people off scare people off yeah. we don't, and we don't want to scare <laughs> we don't want to scare off developers as well to to, to look at this in general so mm -hmm. there's ways to do this uh, as you guys remember earlier on um to keep it simple we gave five negative levels five positive levels and a neutral level so in the newbie zone lex might help these guys but the npcs that he's killing off that would normally affect him are tiered in levels as well towards that so he might he might need to reach between internal friend and loyal which is the top the top tier which he has to achieve for his quest that he's doing those npcs that he's killing might not be rated in that tier between internal friend and loyal friend they might be at the very bottom of that you know just a um kindred but, you know, let's say for instance, the kindred level. So they're not going to be so mad at him for killing off whatever he's killing with those new players. So they might let that one slide. And, and you basically, depending on where you go and, 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 how you, and how you basically categorize these, it's a pretty simple system to do. Um, you could use an ABC system where you have like 150 NPCs that are related to this faction or this race and you scale them you go in you say right this race that that npc that npc is scaled a those 25 npcs are scaled b c d e f and so forth 
and and thereby you eliminate the huge frustration and 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 mind mess up that this would normally bring because you basically scale it down into a set number of systems and you know those are ways that we thought about of um combating these shortcomings that there are because there are definitely a lot of things to consider when looking at this system because there is a lot of worry with it so yeah. could you know could this even work <clears throat> um is this something that could you know would be favored <clears throat> and it's something that you want to build in from the start because if you're going to have npcs you obviously want to give them a flag uh, mm -hmm. of a behavioral flag uh, towards pcs um, and you don't want to down the line suddenly start having to add flags to all the npcs it's going to be a nightmare i think yeah yeah it's definitely something where you need to get the foundation in early definitely um, because there is, it's, you know, it's kind of like having the foundation to a skyscraper. You know, if you don't build it properly, then you're only going to get it so high. Yeah. And the same thing here. You're only going to make it so complex if the foundation really supports it. Otherwise, yeah. you risk the development uh, shortcoming of shoehorning things. Trust me, I've been there and every, every developer I know has been there where you just start sho shoving stuff in there and make it work yeah but then you you know a couple months down the road you make a change and everything falls apart yes, sir. <laughs> so it, it would it would be a wonderful thing to know if they have a foundation set for their reputation or faction system that has a lot of room for expansion mm -hmm. like one thing that i really want to see at a faction is think of faction like a like a web Okay, sitting on the top of, a, of, of like a lake. Now, when you do something, you're basically throwing a pebble. You hit the orcs because you just killed an orc. Well, that ripples. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. humans have thrown fast like you quite a bit because they're in direct competition with these, with these orcs. Now, say there's another human faction of the rover. They're allied with thrown fast. So you might get a smaller... <laughs> to the positive because their allies talking good about you yeah. and it just it kind of cascades it could be two steps three steps or four steps but the same would go negatively mm -hmm. yeah. maybe the orcs are allied with the goblins in the area and if you're killing orcs the goblins are going to hate you but not as fast you know yeah. it, it makes the world less predictable yeah because you know you go ahead I was just going to say, we, we, we just brought with the example with the goblins you might hit an area where normally the NPCs they're not aggro on you from the get go Mm -hmm. Now, you go and do something half across the world. You start, you know, you go into an instance or you go and just kill some NPCs in that other area that's on the other side of the world. You come back, and all of a sudden, those goblins are aggro on you. Right. Yep. You know, exactly. And you might not, not, you might not have ever hurt, hit a goblin. Yep. And you're just like, whoa, because you remember walking through this area at a later or an early level. And you could run right by them because they were neutral. They didn't care about you. Yeah, exactly. Well, like just just for the sake of argument, we're just going to say that goblins are neutral. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you know. <clears throat> yeah, and um, the one thing I love, love, love is you actually building up your your reputation over time with a certain maybe <coughs> out of the way type of mountain folk type of thing. Mm -hmm. And when it hits some sort of a, a level, and all of a sudden. A new quest opens up, which nobody mm -hmm. else has found before. Uh, right. This guides you to a new place, which either can teach you a new skill, give you a new pattern, a new item, maybe that nobody else has. And people are going to say, wow, how the hell did you find that item? And yeah. it's small things like that, which really, really make the game interesting over well, time. Well, there's, yeah. also, there's also big things to look at, though, as well. Look at it from the perspective of me being a dark man. I'm evil. I ch I can't go into throne fast. I'm a kid on sight, but yeah. because I've done something to my personal reputation system that the humans like, I get a pass. Right? Now, yeah, I mean, they won't look at you. Or they, but they, or they're, sorry, their initial feeling towards you could be it's a dark mirror. Okay, well, pull out your sword because yep, we can't let them in. But then you get closer and. 
and I'm not taking this from an in-game perspective, I'm taking this like a real world kind of perspective here. They, you get close and like, oh, it's Yarnella, you know, this, yeah, they're a dark mirror, but you know, they help defend a city against rampaging gnolls, yep. mm, you know? Exactly. So, you know, come on in. Exactly. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I see he's got that, that, that special brooch that the city has given him for his um, help that he gave to them over there. Yep, he's a friend of the right. city. He's allowed well, in. Right. Well, well, this and granted, granted, you know, killing all them gnolls helps your faction, your NPC faction. But it also increases your personal reputation because you were doing a good deed. So yeah. thereby, anyone that is of the same, you know, they're good because I think of personal... <laughs> Uh, your personal reputation is kind of like the Star Wars the Old Republic alignment, mm -hmm. dark side, light side, where if you're interacting with someone that is of the same alignment as you, like say you're on the good side and you're at Throne Fast and they're good people, you get a bonus. So maybe you don't have to do as much factioning. That's just how I see, yeah. kind of see it. And so like right off the bat, you could go from being neutral to being, you know, eh, they kind of tolerate you. Yeah. They don't know you well enough. Just from like walking from this, from your home zone to throne fast and killing a couple orcs. This also gives you, you know, the chance to do stuff with your character that you couldn't do before in any other game. You know, you might only like to play a Scar, Dire Lord, or a Cleric, Dark Mere, or a human so and so, but you. You know, and, and for you to go and do that, you got to go and create an O and do this and do right. that. This also gives you the way to kind of combat that system. So you could have just one character and technically, to some level, depending on how in-depth they really want to go and how mm -hmm. in-depth you really want to build it, you could technically earn your right to do anything in this game. Well, because yeah. you're working I, hard towards it. I personally see your... I personally see that your in-game personal reputation is more like a small modifier. Mm -hmm. Like I might, I might be highly regarded by the humans of Throne Fast as a scar, but I'm a bad person. My re personal reputation is that I'm an evil. Um, so if the guards are of good alignment, even though I've done a lot of stuff that they kind of agree with. I'm a bad person. I'm going to have to work a little extra, a little bit extra to prove to them that I'm not there to cause harm. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But because I'm of, you know, despicably evil alignment or personal reputation, I'm a villain, they're never going to trust me 100%. And another intriguing thing to this as well, though, is looking at this from expansion possibilities or law possibilities. There might, yeah. you know, later on there, there might be an outbreak, a massive war between the Scar and Thronefast. Now Lex mm -hmm. has worked his butt off to gain that personal reputation towards the humans. Now the story goes, there's an outbreak, a massive war going on. He's now stuck with his conscience to think about, what do I do now? Mm -hmm. Do I go my Scar way and approach this? From, from from that perspective or if I, I just... am I loyal to my kinsmen or exactly. do I go with these or do I just stay out of it or exactly. am I a diplomat between the right. two areas so this offers new ways to look at the game as well going forward um, mm. another thing that we also talked about is ways to how to earn this because we talked about the decaying and the good thing about the decaying for your selected city where you're from it makes you have to go back, which is a good thing. That means that the cities right. will not die out. If, if I can jump in real quick. Go on. With decay, it, was, it, it basically pulls you back to neutral. Yeah. It doesn't mm. go from perfectly 100% and it takes you to like kill on sight. It'll no, always no. take you to neutral. So yeah. if yeah. you do bad things, they'll eventually forget about it. And the same if you do good. I exactly. just, just remember that I probably should have clarified that much, much earlier. <laughs> yeah. So what we also talked about is um you know how to earn this. Another way to earn this as well is you could even tier this as well and give people options. Um we were talking about if you went into the negative for instance how you could get that back in in a fairly reasonable time to where you were if you were to mess up because you're not paying attention. So 
ways to gain this, for instance, um, on different speeds is, for instance, Joshua groups up with five other people, and there's three Scar in there. So now he's going to earn the Scar personal faction that he has a lot quicker than he will with the other th um, two people in the group. Because you've got a dwarf now, and you've got a dark mirror in the group as well. So he's going to earn the dwarf and the dark mirror on the, the normal level. But because there's three scar races in this group, he's going to earn it a lot faster on the scar. So it kind of deviates. It, it shifts depending on how the group is. Um, yeah. The same goes for messing up your faction for whatever reason, your personal reputation for whatever reason. Ways to get this back. This is risk versus reward, how we looked at this. So you could mm. basically go out and kill NPCs that give you that faction. But it's going to be very small again, that personal reputation. It's going to be very small. Very small. But mm. you could also sneak your way into the city and kill the lord in the city or the mayor or somebody who's of higher rank. And that will give you a major boost. Or you go out and create... Lex, Lex are raid farming, killing the halfling chief. <laughs> Let's go. So those are ways to, to kind of give people the option, but also keep it challenging and, you know, set risk versus reward. So mm. how long do you want to take to get back to where you were is up to you. You can go and get a raid together and go yeah. and kill off that guy and gain it 100%. Or you could even do something completely monstrous, set a cold city on fire and kill all the folk there and you got it back as well so there's so adding different ways to regain your personal reputation by mess because you messed it up for not paying attention or whatever we've also thought about the shortcomings there and how to combat those as well yeah like the a grouping with three scar for instance uh, it would you would basically be grouping with them and learning what the scar are like as yeah. individuals and therefore you would smooth your reputation your reputation with them uh, or, or faction with them over time yeah ultimately um and and the other thing is that it also the other added benefit is that it would stop people from actually maybe just camping certain mobs Ultimately, because yeah. that might mess up their reputation if they keep on trying to kill the same mobs over time. Um, so it may free up the spaces as well. So there is that benefit that can happen. Yeah, it's, it's just one more way that you can achieve your goal. Yeah. Options aren't bad as long as you don't overwhelm or overload your your players with, with the options. Because there are a couple of games out there that boast, you know, like this, like a lot of sandbox games, they boast like unlimited possibilities. Yeah, which is great until you're sitting there going, "Oh God, how do I want to do this?" Exactly. <laughs> but you know, the, the good thing about this though is you've added so many ideas and thoughts into it that are definitely intriguing. Um, I definitely like the idea of finding you know rare items, relics of significance to a certain people, and if I return that and give it back. I gain my personal rep a lot faster than I would if I, you know, go and sell this to the next vendor that's around the corner. If, well, it's like take a holy relic. You find one in uh, Hellner's Cave. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's a grimy relic you found on a rat guy or a ghost whatever. You could take it back to Throne Pass, give it to the temple priestess or priest. And obviously that's a good deed, mm. you know? Plus, you'll probably get some reputation with Don't Fast, and they're like, oh my god, they returned this holy relic. Or you could sell it, and then obviously that's not exactly a good deed, mm -hmm. because you could add a description to the tooltip of the item saying that, you know, this is a holy relic of, and that way you can't be like, you can't claim ignorance. It's just like, yeah. yeah <laughs> that's your moral I just choice. Wanted to, yeah, it's like, I just wanted to sell it because I'm greedy. Well, greed isn't necessarily a good thing, yeah. so... That would affect. That might not necessarily affect your reputation unless you sell it to someone in Throne Fast, but it would, you it would affect your personal reputation because you did something that was not a nice thing to do. I mean, the, th yeah. the thing is, in general, 
you know why why we're talking about this system and wh why I personally like it it makes me actually look at the game from a different perspective and makes me think twice about what I do and um, this gives me options as well um, I could be working for weeks weeks on end towards a certain faction or my certain personal reputation and then a few months later I have to sway it in a complete different direction which added, added the challenge to this game for me. It keeps me engaged in the game and it's not go out and grind the same faction over and over again and right. camp the same right. camp over and over again. I can do all kinds of different things to right. interact with my personal rep. That's going to help me get there. And, right. you know, this also helps um, create uh, thinking in general. As a guild as well you know we could you know we might as a guild we might want to unlock something certain so we basically as a guild sit down together and we say hey guys we, we, we need to work on getting our personal rep towards this so we can unlock that it also helps Correct. you know you as a community working together to achieve common goals and it gives and it gives everybody that feeling of actually committing and being a part of something because we're doing this together for a valid reason. Yeah, not everybody exactly. just, just being there. Yeah, I mean, how cool would it be if you actually earn reputation with some sort of a group over time and you can then, uh, or the chieftain then says, listen, I've kept this key for a long time, but you can have it have mm -hmm. access to this dungeon. Uh, a, it could be a fast uh, or get you down to level three of a dungeon, which takes mm -hmm. some time maybe to or do Or an that. alternate route. Or yeah. an alternate area yeah. that gets you a brand new get weapon which nobody else. Yeah. Or something. Exa I exactly. mean, it's, it's a nice thing as long as that access is only required. Like one person needs the key so they can open the door. Right there, you're going to create envy from your party members. You'd be like, oh, that's that's pretty cool. I, I yeah. need to do this. But you're not excluding anyone because, you know, there's a lot of things like an EverQuest. Everybody needs this flag or everybody needs this item. Well, that excludes people. Yeah. You know, granted, there does have to be some areas where you've proven yourself to be able to get there <coughs> because that does create a group event kind of situation. But you don't have to do that a lot. You know, sometimes it's okay not to exclude people. Um, I will, I'd like to add one thing about the, like the holy relic idea that we have. Like, say, I, I, I'm for some crazy reason I'm trying to be good. Okay, <laughs> bear with me. I've got this holy relic, but I need money. Mm -hmm. I'm at, I have a dilemma now, and I'm at a crossroads personally. Do I sell it for money and set my rep back a little bit? Yeah. Do I turn it in and still be stuck, you know, possibly with my pockets turned out, but keep my rep intact or possibly improved? Here's oh, a workaround. Here's a yeah, workaround. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Give that relic to a buddy of mine who is evil. He sells it, exactly. we split the money, or he just hands me the money. Yeah. Or I sell it to an evil character. Right here, I'm creating an opportunity for socialization because it doesn't necessarily have to be my buddy yeah. i mean i could just put out a shout uh, on a server-wide channel and be like you know i'm selling 15 holy relics you know i sell i, I sell them for maybe 75 percent of what the person's going to get when they sell them, or whatever you know depends on how the economy goes so right there i'm socializing yep i'm getting my money i'm yeah. not hurting my rep but the person who buys them is getting the rep they want. So it, it's you're one getting of those things your goal. Like, yeah. 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 So now we're working together and I could be working together with strangers. You know, it's like, yeah, it's, that's, that's what I want you know, out it, of a game. You know, it's, it's how real life works as well. You might be generally a good person, but you know, if you're going through a hard time, you don't really want to necessarily do the bad thing. So that's the workaround right there. You yeah. give it to a different, you know, you give it to your friend. Who's, who's known in the community as a bad person? He's, he's generally bad news. He goes and sells it. You meet up in a dark alley. You split the cash 50-50. You've helped yourself out, but you know you you technically 
I've kept your, 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 your shirt white and clean and, and that's how it is. Your consequences, your choices, your personal choices in game should matter. And that's what this reputation system, this personal rep system adds to that is it gives you options to, to make the game intriguing and go in all kinds of different directions you want it to go. And, you know, unlocking certain quests or certain special right. NPCs or locking yourself out from certain NPCs or certain vendors or certain areas in a city, you know, going it's, it's almost like right. the perception system it's, as well. It's, yeah. well, hello, I didn't have this before. You can't link it to a perception system. If you can't link it to a perception mm -hmm. system because say you're walking by uh, uh, down a crowded street. Because your reputation is super, super good, you're basically a hero. And yep. people know you as a hero. So people are going to seek you out more. Exactly. Or if you're evil, perhaps someone's got, you know, a score to settle. Yep. Well, who are you going to seek out? Some random person? Or are you going to seek out the biggest, baddest mother you can find to make sure this person pays? You, you, know? can, you can add all kinds of stuff to this. You can add titles yeah, right. and all... Unlocks right. for the guild, all kinds of things. Um, you can tie it into the quest system because yep. depending, because different, different uh, options for outcomes, mm -hmm. they can affect your, your this, personal reputation. And this also could, you know, tie into the game in general for a time sink for VR to give them plenty of time to work on quality upgrades for the game, quality expansion content, and so forth. Because you might. Go and do some quests for the throne fast. But now your personal reputation isn't quite there yet for you to get final quest. So now right. you've got to go and do some 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 personal reputation. Some, you've, got, you've got to do some quality time for yourself and go out there and, and, and take care of that. A time sink right. is also used for that as well. Strat has a, has a very interesting question. You know, gear depending on rep to equip. Now, here, here's the thing about that, because that, that is very interesting. If this goes into a more D&D-ish realm where you have, like, um, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, sentient weapons and armor, like sentient yep. items. The soul yeah. of something is in an item, and it can actually the talk to you. sword of holy... Right. Then I can see that. I can mm -hmm. absolutely see that they won't let me anywhere near it because I'm evil, right? Yeah. Generally, I it wouldn't because it's like... I'm an evil guy. Well, I could still wear your shirt, you know. It it would make sense with the right context or background to the item. Yeah, but, but it's not gonna it but it's not gonna unlock it's not gonna unlock the specialty within that shirt. Your shirt right. might not be able to flash. Right. And that's mm. something too. Because I'm an evil character, I can still wear this, you know, ornate chess piece I found. It just so happens that I give it to Day, Dayhawk, who is a paladin. And this item is very unique in the fact that it's somewhat sentient because day is good and this is good aligned. All of a sudden now, maybe he gets a little aura of regeneration around him. Like, we'll say like two hit points a tick, you know, nothing major. But he puts it on and says, did this do this? Because I got a little message saying that, you know, because of my pure of heart, it got something unlocked. And I'm yeah. just sitting there going, what? All of a sudden, my mind is blown. I'm just like, I've had this thing for weeks. Are you kidding me? Yeah, it also, it makes you think twice about the, the items you get as well. Yeah. And, you know, and, and, and going looking at this from a, a gear depending on rep as well, you could have maybe crafters create rep gear. Oh, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Mm. Then you would all, and all of a sudden now, your criteria for a crafter becomes a little more specific. Well, if you think about it, I mean, if you get the rep with a city and you're giving those holy relics into the um, in, into the priesthood there, um, at the end of the day, when you build your max faction or, or the max, max reputation over there, they'll say, well, this uh, pattern will actually allow you to give you the holy version of that sword that you can mm -hmm. create normally. Boom. And now all of a sudden you can sell it for 10 times more going forward. Yep. There's definitely... I mean, it's it's a really, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of sitting there going, God, I kind of want to just sit down and just kind of flesh out that idea a little yeah. more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Strat, A plus, my man. Yeah. Oh, that, that was good. And the funny thing is, is that I approached it not even going that direction. I was just like, 
no, I don't like that. And all of a sudden, I, the gears start turning. I'm like, that's actually kind of neat. Because, I mean, in the end, what this what this whole discussion is about is faction should really matter. Mm-hmm. It shouldn't be something that is a given. It should be mm-hmm. earned. Um, right. I start off in my city. It doesn't matter what race I am. I should be right. neutral from the get go because right. I'm Depending a nobody. On who you are. Like with the scars background, I could see you starting with a with a fairly evil reputation you because have... of the way they are, the way their lore is. It would make sense. No, to what, me. what I'm saying, it, you no, what I'm, no, no, no. What, what I'm saying, as a scar being born, you in Scargon, you're neutral to your race. Yeah. Yes. You earn. I'm a nobody. You're nobody. You exactly. earn and unlock your right <clears throat> to access to certain areas of the city, to certain aspects of the city, to certain um, quests as you go along. Because you've got to gain that rep first, and you've got to make a name for yourself. Right. Yeah, you're and not going to go into every door. That's for right. Sure. And and this is where you kind of get you, you you know your standard two dimensional or sorry one dimensional faction system today. Where say you're playing an Ixar in EverQuest, who's hated by freaking everybody, mm-hmm. so they start with like a m- mega negative faction. Well, you could essentially do the same thing, but in a much more uh, multi-dimensional way. Because I'm a Scar, I get so much negative, but because I'm also personally evil when I start the game, because I'm a Scar and I just I like to eat little people, um, <laughs> it's it's even more negative, right? And just because I want, if I want to get into Thronefest because, you know, party in Thronefest, guys, sure, it's optional. Um, not only am I going to have to do stuff specifically for Thronefest, my personal decisions are going to have to be of a positive nature. Because just because I help them out a lot doesn't mean they're necessarily going to let me in because, you know, we're going to let this guy in. He's going to eat people. I don't care if he's killed hundreds of gnolls, you know. I have to prove them that I am I'm not going to cause problems. I'm worth I'm worthy of you know passing through their gates. Yeah. Granted that makes a lot of work for me, and I'm sitting there in the back of my head going, Shut up. <laughs> There's definitely you know a lot of room for this. Um yeah. you know, giving giving you the personal the personal choice to 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 craft the game you want it to be. Um, and this also makes makes it, you know, when they talk about every character is unique, this system would make every character unique because not everybody's going to be on the same page. Right. And, and I mean, the nice thing about this, this whole, like, double layer system, because I have maxed faction with Throne Fast, and I'm an evil character... Does the, it means I have to go the extra mi- extra mile if I mm-hmm. want to go into this? Uh, we'll we'll say it's like the the priest area of the town, yeah, where everyone is is just good aligned. That's just where all the good people will congregate. Okay, if I want all the really really good quests from there, just because I'm accepted in the city doesn't mean they're going to hand me anything because it's like I'm a good person. Why would I help you? You're evil. It's like, exactly. Mm, you have to you gain. Have you, you have to gain that loyalty. Um, right. Level. You have to prove that you're a good person, and then all of a sudden, it's like you know. Yes, even though you're a scar, you've helped the city, and you've helped people. You've helped save, you know, little babies from burning buildings. So we like you now. But yeah. I mean, I know we've been talking a lot of like this side or this side, but let's not forget that the vast majority of these like NPCs could s- simply be aligned to neutral. Where your personal reputation doesn't matter. There's only very specific instances where your personal reputation would actually make a huge difference. Yeah, but like you know, but that's the thing as well. Even with the neutral um, aspect of it, that adds a, uh, that adds another twist. Mm-hmm. They're neutral. They don't care for these the you know a certain amount of NPCs. Now you might come across. A group of NPCs that you don't know that they have a kinship, a friendship with these guys, and they really like them and don't want to see them get hurt. Now you go and interact with those NPCs, you get back, you come back across those guys where you know you're neutral. They don't, they don't, you know, you're seen neutral by them. They don't really care. 
But because you've gone and acted out with your personal rep and gone and beat up some poor little goblin fellas that they actually really like, you're now in the negative with them. And all of a sudden, guess what? We ain't letting you in here, man. Right. You've gone and messed with these people. Now, you've got to go and try and figure out a way to fix that problem. Right. Yeah. And, it's, and the thing is, like, um, even if you have, like, uh, just, like, a small change for personal reputation, it could do something like it's just a little boost to the faction because mm -hmm. these guys are good and you're good. Yeah. So even though you're, like, right on that line to where they'll let you in, because you're good and they're good, they'll let you in because it just boosts All you right. over that line a little bit. So right there, it's, like, it's kind of worth – working on if you if your if your end goal is to do that really really crazy good quest over in the good area of this right. town it, it's worth maxing them both yeah but for the most part it's like if i want to get into this evil town well i'm evil so they obviously approve mm. how much they approve is completely up to them like you know a star is probably going to look at a dark mirror and be like hmm fish fry uh they don't care that they're evil. They don't care if somebody's good. You know, mm. it's just that race is nature. The the only real downside from all the talk that I'm kind of getting in in the in, in my mind right now is the fact that as a developer, I'm sitting here going, "Oh my god, that's a lot of work." Mm -hmm. And it is. It is. It's, it's definitely a lot of well, work. Well, I do think that um, you know, I, I do think that if you, your faction can go to a maximum level so let's say it's fifty thousand, but without becoming having a very high reputation you can only probably access forty thousand other out of that fifty thousand at any given time that'll give you access to many things but because they don't really trust you that much or whatever the case may right. be they're not really going to give you the really good stuff right. at the end but of the it, day and like using using the priest example it could go the opposite way too because you're neutral and you have your max reputation with thrown fast, maybe you know the thieves guild offer you something really cool because they're they might be neutral. They don't care if you're good or bad. They'll steal from you. Mm -hmm. Or if you're evil, maybe there's an evil sign to those city like under the sewers somewhere where necromancers are hanging out. And because you're evil, they're gonna give you something really good. Yeah. So it's not like you're really excluding anybody. You're just kind of giving them options based upon, you know, the work they've done for the city and their their personal, well, I guess, personality, I guess. Yeah. Personal alignment. I mean, when I, when I, this system really makes me think of, of Star Wars The Old Republic. <laughs> and I, I loved that game for the first six months. Um, but their alignment system was a, a huge letdown, you know. It really had no bearing on anything besides you look different, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and I, th I think that's kind of why I'm really into this this uh, personal rep and faction system, because I've always wanted my personal alignment to actually matter, you know. Yeah. Mm. Because I'm, I, I tend to play evil characters, but I always tend to try to be a nicer person when I'm playing. Because uh, I don't know, I just I like the, I, the irony of it. Mm. I want that to have a place. Yeah. Whereas, like, even in EQ, your your fan your your personal faction or sorry, faction doesn't really matter. Yeah. Because you can gain it or lose it at a at a pretty steady rate right it's just, and it's pretty two-dimensional because it's i mean it's the, the first game with faction let's face it an another thing to look at as well is from the neutral standpoint with, with expansions as well let's say for instance the this race is neutral that you've you've engaged with now an expansion comes out but you've been working really hard to gain your personal rep with these people so they're neutral regardless towards your race. Now an expansion comes out and all of a sudden there's hatred between the two. You would normally be messed up and have to go through hordes of faction grinding to get back to neutral ground or get back to that area. But because or, you've already been working on your personal rep, guess what? Mm -hmm. 
You're going to be unaffected by those effects between your two races now. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have like a stepping stone. Right. And see, th th but this is one of the reasons why I actually kind of have grown very fond of that whole decay system mm -hmm. idea. Where it's like, if you're really bad or really good, it just pulls you towards neutral yeah. over time. Is that I can, like, almost at the drop of a hat, really just change my play style and kind of mix it up a little bit. Exactly. Make the game interesting, and mm -hmm. I don't have to re-roll anything. I don't have to get this another character up to do this or that. It's, I can just go about my business, not help them anymore. Eventually, I'll be neutral. Yeah, and explore, yeah. And explore different aspects of the game mm -hmm. with, with, your exist, with your character that you've grown to love over the years. And, you know, looking at the game, you've gone and played, you played it this way for five years down the road. You, you played it this way. Now, all of a sudden, you want, you want something different. You want to try something completely different. You've been good. Now, you want to go and look at it from a bad, you know, from, from the evil side of things. Well, guess what? I don't have to go and create another character. I'm going to add a twist to this game now. I'm going to just go and start killing everything that, you know, I see and just get hated. And, and all right. of a sudden, now all, you're, you're, you're running through the game and these NPCs start talking to you. These NPCs start coming up to you and saying, hey, come here. We want to talk right. to you. We've got something to offer you. You walk into this zone where they're normally all aggro towards you all of a sudden they're not anymore oh guess what i can go around here gather all the materials that are in this area that are normally right. really hard to come right. by it adds a complete twist to the game yeah and the decay will also just it, it could potentially give you access to stuff because maybe you don't go to throne fast for two months you know and then you're running through then you're going why do i have a quest here never had a quest um, here before because you leveled your faction so quick um, so Catharsis has something really I know, good to look at. I know, that's why I just wanted to quickly talk about We actually talked about this. Um, Catharsis about, could you link faction between our character with progeny system? We kind of um, looked at this. With touched the, on that, yeah. Touched on that yeah. with the personal reputation. <clears throat> that could give you benefits for your progeny. Or, or, yeah. or give you some, some negative um, aspects as well. There's not always going to be something yeah. positive about well, it. Yeah. There could be so some let's negatives. Look at, let's, let's, let's look at it this yeah. way. For instance, yes. he's a killer of halflings. He's known as a killer of halflings, and uh, he has a child, or whatever the say. And he goes yeah. and does a. a I'm pretty sure system. that halflings aren't going to really care for him. Yeah, he's going to see the surname of Lexa and go, "Oops, no, 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 no. We're not letting them in anywhere close to this place. We hate them still." Yeah. So Something. you would obviously, it might not be like I'm maxed evil, right? And I have maxed terrible faction with halflings. As my Scar Dire Lord. I have a child. It might be three quarters or half of what mine was because it's not me. But because they're associated with me, they're probably not going to really trust them. And I honestly wouldn't either. But you could also take it another step as well. Mm. That could be one of the reap rewards that you can take over as well. Because they talked about maybe you know certain attributes, certain traits you could take over. Maybe a certain special spell you could take over. Maybe that's one of the re rewards as well. You could pick a personal reputation that you would normally not have with that race. You could take that one over with you and say, okay, this progeny that I'm going to create is going to take over the loyal reputation from from throne fast right yeah so, exactly. so so now you've got that when you create your progeny you don't have to go through all that trouble again because you've taken that over that's one of the benefits you've taken over so there's definitely ways to um bring that into the mix and, and yeah. also add add a little twist if you want um i, I definitely think lex's progeny would have like about Five new recipes for a halfling stew type of thing, you know, as they come into the game. So there's the bonus as well. <laughs> I got, I got, I got peppered halfling. <laughs> I've got halfling in a blood sauce. I've got halfling with a with a with a nice side of dark mirror fillet. Uh, <laughs> with fava beans. Because <laughs> well, you know, when we look at the city faction, for instance, you've got your city faction. You normally you might have you might have a guild faction within there. You might have a trading faction or a crafting faction within that. So you've got maybe three different factions. 
Um, crafting is one the one you normally have to work towards. You have to gain that. You have to work that up. Um, the city faction for the normal city, you you've got maximum. That's just you know so out of date. Add add a twist to it. Add some add some depth to it. There's so many different routes they can go with the individual races and their cities, and break it down into certain areas that you you only gain if you have the right amount of faction or reputation right. in, in 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 this sense and you know that's what we were talking about as well look at look at this right. from the guild perspective as well adding a personal guild reputation that could shift what things you access as a guild so you could push your guild towards the evil side the the, the naughty side because there's some really cool buffs there or or, or things right. that you could access but your guild in general is good but you've worked as your guild on getting your, your personal guild reputation towards that side to gain that item now an update comes out from vr where they go and introduce some new goodies towards the guild and now there's something that you want on the good side now you got the you got to work your way all the way back there and having the decay right. come in as well right. swaying mm. it you know this yeah. also makes the guild actively work to keep mm. us where we need to be gives right. you gives the guild something to do right and guild a guild faction could not necessarily mean that i have to be good no you know it could it, just be that you know you could just have uh, the vast majority of good people and then the guild is good and you know if i if i choose to represent the guild like say there's a tabard with mm -hmm. our stuff obviously i'm representing the guild so and the guild's good well obviously it's going to boost my reputation a little bit but um I, i'd like to kind of just take a step back and point out the fact that really all we're doing here is adding one single layer above the traditional faction system here and yep. look at all the different things that we can do, you know. Yeah. Now, that's not to say that another layer would be good or bad, or that we even need the second layer. But yeah. it would just be nice to be able to add a little more dynamic gameplay rather and, than just a flat system. And depth to the game. That, uh, I think that that's a better word. Yeah. I mean, yeah, because it would, it would add quite a bit more depth just... And all we're doing is just adding one simple, like, negative 100 to positive 100 meter to it, really. Yeah. At least yeah. from my perspective. And you can do so much more with it. And it feels so much more fleshed out, you know. And I think, like, um, was mentioned in chat that, I think it was Ark that said it, that VR is likely to go with a very similar system to EverQuest, which was the first game to implement a faction system. Mm -hmm. um, they are the pioneers of it. Um, and that's that's fine, but that's a 1999 system. Yep. It's it's time that we improve upon it. It's There's just nothing. like crafting. It's I, time to make it better. And we're not saying yeah. that this has to be something that has to be done from the get go. This is no, something we're not even that saying that, our idea is good. Yeah, we're not even saying it's <laughs> yeah. good. This could you know we could you know think that this is a cool idea, but then there's so much that we haven't thought about. That, could be you know, negative. That, that, that could that order. could sway us. Yeah. But yeah. you know, this helps though. Look at faction from a completely different perspective as well, and right. you know, help give some thought on how could we, with minimal assets, with minimal stress, with minimal costs, engage in the faction system and move it into a more modern direction that offers a little more depth without having to put tons of work into it right i mean i don't know if there was something similar to what we've been talking about i i personally i think i would feel a lot more immersed now granted that's my personal opinion you folks out there might differ that's cool but i'm i'm just very tired of the basic kill get yep. or lose faction do a quest, get or lose faction. It's like, I just, I want something a little or, more. Or basically, you have to reach this level cap or this number cap 
to gain access to these items, to this race, to this quest. I yeah. want to earn, like 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 Thassa said, I want to earn that buy. I want to know right. that I went out of my way and I've achieved I that. Feel, I want to I feel, feel, hey, yeah. I finally did it. I yeah, exactly. finally I got there. This. I accomplished this and now I've gained this. I want to yeah. feel good about myself. And yeah. proud about my right. what I've achieved. Yeah, You know, it's... It's just like what VR has been saying, like, you know, they're bringing challenge back because all of this feel good. Oh, you killed a fluffy little level one bunny. Here's an epic sword. It's yeah. not satisfying. Game two levels. Oh. No. It's yeah. not satisfying. And the same feel with grinding out fashion. It's not satisfying because you can just go grind out a bunch of stuff that can't even hurt you. Yeah. Right? So if we make it a little more engaging, the entire game is going to benefit from this. Your entire player base, as long as you're very careful with its design and implementation, because good design, bad implementation is just as bad as both being bad. And I don't know, it's, you know, I, I look at Pantheon, there's still a lot of things that I, I, I am worried about. Mm -hmm. I, I'm worried that personally, I might get tired of something or that I won't become engaged with a certain aspect. Crafting it is one. The reputation is another. So can we find a nice middle ground here with VR and that little twist? I hope so. I really do. I mean, it's, you know, everybody's asking for challenge and when I hear these game companies, these MMO game designers speak about uniqueness, show, show <laughs> me, show me one, one, one MMO right now where each character is unique. You're not. Okay. You're all the same. You got the flavor you're, of you're the month. You're all the same special little snowflake. You got the flavor of the month. You got. You look the same. Something like this, a little twist to the faction or to the reputation, to your, you know, to the classes themselves, with with the, with the options that they give that they might give you, that adds to that uniqueness. You know, mm. my 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 unique player, my my dark mirror cleric is going to be different to Josh's dark mirror cleric, to Lex's dark mirror cleric, and so forth and so forth, because we're all going to choose different paths, and we're all going to make different personal choices throughout right. the game that are going to impact us, us all in different ways. The same with the perception as well. Everybody's going to have their unique, different way of accessing stuff. That's the great thing about having stuff being dynamic. Now, Josh yeah. might go into Halnir's Cave with the perception system. It goes bing, 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 and he gains access to, to the perception quest. Josh comes along and goes, oh, oh I found this. Oh, this is cool. I got this quest going up, blah, right. blah, blah. Where did you get it from? Oh, I went into Halnir's Cave and got it. But because it might be dynamic, I go to go into Halnir's Cave with exactly the same race and class, with exactly the same area, and it doesn't happen to me because it's dynamic. Right. Maybe certain right. events, maybe my personal reputation. That's where we add. Yep. Re that's where we add this into the mix. My personal reputation isn't where it should be, or I got the wrong personal reputation to have accessed it there. Yep. Exactly. Mm -hmm. All of these things add layer and depth to the yeah. game. Right. And it's, I mean, I know we've talked about this for quite a long time. Yeah. You know, we've, we've put a lot of <laughs> ideas on the table. That table is probably feeling a little cluttered right now. But the thing <laughs> is, is we, we put out a lot of opinions, a lot of ideas. Some are thought through fairly well, some are not. And we do it because now vr has all these ideas that they can pick and choose from they can pick it up they can look at it and be like hmm no i don't like it put it back to you yep. you know because we can we can just do what we can do and just offer opinions and speculation mm -hmm. and you know what would i do you know kind of thing just like everyone else out there you guys can do it too it, on the go to the forums give your opinion on something yep just just because we're here doing it doesn't mean that we're like the ipso facto source for what should be done <laughs> no <laughs> but maybe someone out there maybe the next arc the next catharsis or maybe the next uh wiki wacky woo is gonna take one of our ideas and roll with it yep 
and come up with something that just blows our mind. Definitely. That's that's my hope anyway. Definitely, you know, all these all these discussions that we have in the forums, on the shows, and everything. It just takes one crazy idea, just one, just one little thought to you know expand and bring it. That's what we try and do. That's all we're trying to do. We're trying to expand on the ideas put forward by VR, put forward by the community, like with the with the law keeper idea, um, where we did where we did the show for. It's stuff like that that we you know we love to engage in. Is you know expand on these ideas because not necessarily all ideas are good or bad, but just because they might sound bad or feel bad or it's not worked in the past doesn't mean it's not it can't work in the future if it's thought out and that's the reason right. why we do we love doing this and do this with you guys because that's what it's right. all about opening our minds yeah. and taking a look at this and saying well, well what's the downside where could we go with this what could work why didn't it work and so forth but anyway right. um i'm gonna let you guys think about some other stuff and while we do that i want to quickly show off um the uh Assets that were sent to us by Vesem, who won the um, Protectors Pledge. We were going to have it on screen today, but um, again, some little hiccups uh, prevented us from that. So we're going to show off the assets that he sent us. And I'm going to bring these up on screen. I'm going to make a guys. joke at Josh's expense. We were going to show Vesem stuff, but we just ran out of gas. <laughs> okay. So this is the. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, so what you see on the screen now are the layouts that he created for us um, for different um, areas of our videos that we do. This is a class discussion um, where you can basically you got the, you got thrown fast in the background and um, all this all this good stuff. If you actually look closely on the next screen that comes up, he's actually added some law in the background. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I like that. Mm. And this is the um, general discussion layout. Very nice. And mm -hmm. then we've got the raid layout coming up. Um, certainly, certainly better than I can do. Might be stick figures and poorly drawn boxes. <laughs> so thanks for those, Resum. Um, yeah, thanks, Res. It was great. Congrats. congrats and congrats, yeah. Yeah. Go through these one more time. Yeah, we were meant to be using the um, class discussion layout, but we uh, ran out of time to get it ready in time for the show. Yep. So, um, anyway, I think we've We've uh, covered quite a lot, um, given a lot of people a headache. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm sure there's a couple people that are saying they're confused. God, will Lex ever shut up? Would yeah, they just they shut up? Would they shut up? What the hell? You know, could we focus on one Can area we just get first? the game out? Yeah. <laughs> Would you stop interrupting, Lex? So, um, like I said, uh, the next show is, I think, the 7th. The seventh, yep. The seventh is next. The next show we'll be doing a player Q and A, and we will be having um, Pantheon role players with us. Talk a bit about their website and uh, what role, the the, um, the Pantheon role players website is all about. To give you guys some information on all of that, and um, talk a bit about Pantheon, what gets them excited about it, um, and uh, to answer some of your questions as well so make sure to join us and um, if you have any questions that you would like to ask pantheon role players next thursday will be your chance to do that live on stream um that's next thursday and like lex mentioned on tuesday by the latest monday we'll have the december calendar up for you guys as well we will be streaming on the 7th, the 14th, the 21st, and the 28th. There won't be any Tavern Talk this month because that's on the 26th. The last Tuesday is the 26th of this month, which is obviously Boxing Day. 
so we won't be um, doing a tavern talk there we'll be doing a tavern talk at the end of January so no tavern talk um, and we will be doing a show on the 28th an open discussion we have a quite a few guests lined up hopefully they can all make it um, to chit chat about hopefully, the, hopefully, the... hopefully by then pre alpha sets in and I'm in my I mean <laughs> yeah. <in> my <laughs> yeah yeah it'd be like a very a very short show hello and thank you <laughs> We're here. Bye. 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 I'm gonna go play. <laughs> yeah so we're with that guys there uh, we hope you enjoyed the show um spark some ideas maybe for you um discuss with others maybe you guys come up with things that we haven't thought about um and yeah we'll see you all next thursday to with um pantheon role players take care peace out everybody cheers cheers, cheers.